these other wars that we've seen in Afghanistan and Iraq, guess what they were mainly about? Oil. Money. Afghanistan was so the Carlisle group could put their big pipeline in. Had nothing to do with anything else. Uh, Iraq, guess what? They've got oil over there. We thought, I heard the conversations as we were going in about how we'd be making all kinds of money on this war. How they do it. And I just heard that they're already allocating the oil drilling rights in Syria to the various oil companies now. So it always looks the same. A little tiny thing, and oh my God, we've got some people dying over there. And so let's go in and just sort of show them who's boss. That's so shocking off. And that's not a problem. It's not a problem for us to drop our bombs on them, even though they were doing the same kind of thing. It's not a problem for us. Why? Because we're right. Everything that we goddamn do, we're right. That's what we think, isn't it, in this country? And you know what? Usually we're wrong. Usually we're wrong with this machine that we got here. The machine is usually wrong. So, uh, where is Alan? Here he is. Come on up, Alan. Tell us what you want. Thank you, Ray. Hey, it's good to be out here and to see this group of people here. Uh, somebody had mentioned that uh, it was good to see a lot of youth in this rally. Well, this is the youth, and it's good to see that old folks like me keep coming back. Because let's hear it for the youth of this nation. One of the young people in this nation that I want to honor today is a man named John Lewis. He's a youthful 73-year-old. And John Lewis was the youngest person to speak at the March on Washington in 1963. At the age of 23, he was on that podium, and he gave an amazing speech. He had been the, the director of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He was dedicated to nonviolent action. He knew what it meant to go to Mississippi and register voters. He knew the number of people who had already been killed working on what we refer to as the Civil Rights Movement. That Civil Rights Movement was the culmination of hundreds of years of action to bring rights to people, rights to people whose rights had been denied for years. And they were up against the United States government to earn those rights. John Lewis, not long after that march on Washington, went on another march. He started on a march from Selma to Montgomery. And they came to a bridge. And on the other side of that bridge, who was there? The Alabama State Troopers were there. And they attacked and they beat. And John Lewis was put in the hospital. And it wasn't until then that the United States government weighed in on this issue. And a couple of weeks later, led by the movement, the Civil Rights Movement, they did march from Selma to Montgomery. And they brought an end to segregation in that part of the world. But there's still a lot of work to do. And one of those things we've got to do is bring it in to war. And we can do that. John Lewis, and I want to just read a little bit of what John Lewis said a few years later. John Lewis said, One of the real problems is that our whole economy in this country, in my own estimation, is built around war and conflict. We have a war economy, and we hate to do any serious thinking or contemplation about a peacetime economy. Somehow, the American people must force the government to do some serious thinking, some serious planning about a peacetime economy and of absorbing the millions of men that we have in uniform into our new economy. That was John Lewis. I encourage you to read about the Civil Rights Movement. 
There were other luminaries at that time, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And he came out to speak against the Vietnam War at that time. He was one of the key people who noticed what was going on in our country. I can't do better than what his words were back in those days. All I can do is quote from him. A nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. And Dr. Martin Luther King said that in 1967. And I'm here to repeat his words today. Martin Luther King also said, why are there 40 million poor people in a nation overflowing with such unbelievable affluence? Why has our nation placed itself in the position of being God's military agent on earth? Why have we substituted the arrogant undertaking of policing the whole world for the high task of putting our own house in order. Those are the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. He is the only person, Martin Luther King is the only person who has a national holiday in his honor. None of the presidents that, that not a single president, maybe Lincoln and Washington share a national holiday. They call it President's Day. Well, Martin Luther King won the Nobel Peace Prize. It was given to him because he earned it, because he was dedicated to nonviolence. We have somebody in a very powerful position today who was given the Nobel Peace Prize. And it's time for him to earn it. for the President of the United States to put down a red line. And that red line should be that the United States government will no more go to war. But you know what? He's not going to do that until the people of this country, the people of the world, earn the Nobel Peace Prize. And we can do that. There are two superpowers left in the world today. One of them is the United States government. The other superpower is the people of the world. And we are the people, we are the people that will make the difference. We are the people that will compel those back in Washington, D.C. to do their job the job of keeping peace in the world. We have another person back there who was at one time very outspoken against the Vietnam War, a Vietnam War veteran. He now finds himself in the position of the Secretary of State of this country. You know, it seems to me that the Secretary of State is the head, the very person in charge of our di diplomatic corps the person who's in charge of those embassies and those consulates around the world, the person who has the connections with people around the world to work together for a nonviolent solution to whatever faces the world. But do you know what John Kerry said on Friday? John Kerry said, some people cite the risk of doing things. We need to ask. What is the risk of doing nothing? John Kerry's got it all backwards. If he's been doing nothing, that's why it's coming down to war. He needs to re-strengthen his efforts. He's not the commander-in-chief. He's the commander of the diplomacy that needs to be going on. And we need to call upon people like John Kerry to do his job. upon the president of this country to earn the Nobel Peace yeah. Prize.
And I thank you because you are the people who will earn the honor and the respect and the dignity of the people of the world by standing up against the power of the United States government. Thank you. because this is not going to be the last rally that we're going to need to come to probably on this war, the starting of this war. I hope not. I hope we can stop it. This, we have a good chance to stop it because they're going to have to talk about it for at least another few weeks. We may need to have another rally or something in that period of time and get even more people here to talk this over. Plus, we're Citizens Oversight is sponsoring the sound system and the media box and for other types of events that we've had here. Go to your local government, sit in on the meetings, make sure you speak up and say no when they're doing the wrong thing. That is a very powerful thing to do.